So we've already talked a lot about the various parts of the urinalysis when we've been talking about um, kind of all the, the kidney diseases and going through those cases and electrolytes. So I'm just going to kind of do a more formal video for urinalysis to just pick up and tie up some loose ends. So when we talk urinalysis, of course, we're going to do it sometimes just as a routine part of blood work, but a lot of times we'll do it because the animal actually has urinary tract disease. Maybe they're straining, they have abnormal urine color, etc. So the first thing that's important to notice in a, or to note in a, in a urinalysis is the collection method. And of course, there's three collection methods, and the most common is free catch. And I think people say negative things about free catch urine samples, but they're very easy to get depending on how cooperative your patient is. And unless you have a, a very kind of dirty back end of an animal, you're usually going to get a relatively clean sample, uh, especially if it's mid-catch sample or mid-stream sample. Uh, the next, which takes more skill, is actually getting a catheterized sample. Uh, and so this is much harder in female animals than it is male animals, and you can get some squamous epithelial cells. The last, which probably takes the most skill, um, and I think everybody thinks it's the best, but I don't know that it necessarily is, especially if you have a patient who doesn't want you to do it, is a cystocentesis. And this is the most likely to actually get some iatrogenic hemorrhage so you can see some red cells with it. So we actually break up the urinalysis into three parts in this video. This first video is just going to kind of cover the physical properties. Then the next video will be the chemical properties, which is really the dipstick. And then lastly, the sediment examination, which is microscopic. And we'll practice all these in the urinalysis lab coming up in a few weeks. So we've talked a lot about urine specific gravity and you have all those cutoffs for what is adequate concentration. And of course, we use a refractometer to measure urine specific gravity and we have specific scales for dogs versus cats. Uh, we've talked about those adequate renal concentrating um, numbers for cats, dogs, and large animals. Uh, and so a couple other terms, remember that um, 1008 to 1012 is isocenuria, meaning, so that's the isocenuria, so iso meaning that it's the same as the plasma specific gravity if you did it. Um, anything less than 1008 is going to be hyposthenuria. And of course, this is because it's less than the plasma specific gravity if you did it. And it's because the tubules are actively diluting the, um, the filtrate. And hypersthenuria um, is, can mean different things. One, it can mean those magic cutoffs, so that 1025, 1030, and 1035. Um, but to some people, it actually means greater than 1012 because it's greater than the actual plasma um, specific gravity if you did it. But of course, we know that hypersthenuria may mean that the patient isn't actually concentrating appropriately if they're dehydrated. So you're always going to look at urine, urine specific gravity in context of what's going on with the patient. Um, urine color, uh, we don't really talk a lot about urine color except for when it's red. Um, and of course, we've already talked about red urine color being due to either actually hematuria, um, hemoglobinuria, and then we'll talk soon enough about myoglobinuria from muscle injury. There's other colors of urine we talk about, but usually red, brown are the ones that we focus the most on. The turbidity of urine, we don't really get that excited other than to say that certainly horses um, and guinea pigs and rabbits have very turbid looking urine because of all the calcium carbonate crystals, but certainly lots of things can cause cloudy urine. This includes things like uh, infections with lots of cells, other types of crystals, um, sperm, lipid, contrast media, you name it. And we grade it, um, but it tends to not be as helpful. The odor of the urine, of course, odor, odor urine smells, and that's kind of understandable. So normal Normal urine volume is really dependent on what's going on with the patient. Uh, but when we talk about things like um, polyuria, that of course means that an animal is urinating more than we would normally expect. Um, and then we've talked about terms when we've talked about renal failure is oliguria, meaning decreased renal um, production of urine. And then anuria, meaning there's really no urine being produced or it's less than kind of what our cutoff is. And you'll learn more about this when you get to um, when you get to third year.